Hi guys, welcome to this episode of Answer the Makers on Stockfit. In today's episode, we'll cover everything there is to know about the zero point, how to set it up, why it's important, how the whole thing works. Let's go. Okay guys, welcome to this episode. Please like and subscribe. If you want to see more content like this, we'd love to know about it. So just add in the comments, send us some emails, do what you have to do. Just give us as much feedback as possible. I'd really appreciate it if you do. So in this episode, we're going to cover the zero point and what the CNC machine understands by the zero point. And then obviously the homing position of the machine as well. Those are two totally different things. So let's start off with the homing position. Because I, I found that there is a couple of uh, small factors that confuse people. So the first thing is when you switch the machine on, it will automatically, in our case, it automatically find its homing position. The machine's zero zero position as such basically what that says is it takes a machine and it sort of calibrates the machine and says okay these are my limitations in which i can work in our specific case this machine homes to the left front corner so basically where i'm standing so if i switch this machine on basically it'll it'll have this if i hit the, the home function it'll lift the heads up and it'll move towards me into the front corner and that is the machine's um, basic homing position, okay? So that just, basically what happens with that is the machine basically gets to its point where it starts with a zero, zero point based on the machine itself. Now, the machine needs to know what its limitations are. In our case, we've got two meters across on the X and we've got three meters towards the back on the Y axis, okay? And the Z axis is basically, you know, it's a standard, 150 or whatever it is, but we don't, that, that's not as important in this specific situation. So, the machine itself goes into its zero point over here, and its home position, and it says, okay, it reaches its limit switch on the side here, and it says, okay, I've reached this limit switch. The, the, the gantry and the spindles move this way until it hits its limit switch again, and then it's got, it reaches its maximum point, and it can't go any further than that. Then it knows, okay, we're in this corner, we can work that way. So that's the homing position. Now, the CNC machine will only stop once it hits its own limit switch. So, if this machine was a half a mile long, this gantry would have been able to move back as far as it allows. Same for the x-axis. So, if this was a four meter wide bed, the, the gantry would be able to move all the way that way. And the software will always see it that way. So, if I set up a file now today, even with my limitations of, let's say, 4 meters by 12 meters, for argument's sake, the software will start, the machine will start its process and it will run. And if I had a, a line, for argument's sake, running from this side all the way across for 10 meters or 8 meters or whatever it is, the machine itself is going to think it can do that. It will pick up the G-code and it will start the process. It will run until it hits a limit switch and then say, oh, sorry, we can't go any further and you'll have an error on the file. Same rule this way uh, on the on the Y axis. So basically the limit switches is what keeps you limited in with whatever you can do. So your machine, this is a two by three, your machine might be 1.2 meters by three meters or it could be 1.2 by 2.4 meters or it could be a small hobbyist desktop type of machine. This may be a meter by a meter, whatever the case is. Most machines work on the same principle. They've got a limit switch which means it can't go further than that specific limit switch. Okay, that's why the machine homes, and that's it. So we've got the, the machine's homing sorted out. Now the next step and the main core component of this video is your, your zero point, setting up your zero point in a software environment for the machine. So now that the machine knows where its limitations are, basically what we need to do is we need to, to put our material anywhere on this, on this bed of two by three meters. It could be anywhere and we have to tell this machine in a real world environment this is where we placed that piece of material okay so the way that you would do it in some cases let's say i did solid walnut boards or whatever the case may be i could have multiple boards and i could run them individually and zero point each and every single one and the machine will know okay this in this specific case this is where we start in this specific case this is where we start and that's how it will be built up. So, basically what the zero point is, it's a registration point for this machine to understand 
in relation to the bed where the material is situated. Okay, so what usually happens when you buy a CNC machine is the, the, the suppliers would usually say, oh, you zero bottom left corner, quick, quick, and they kind of sell you the machine and off you go. But they don't really explain how dynamic a zero point can be. Now, just to give you some sort of idea, on this square piece of MDF that I've got here, we could set up the zero point to be bottom left corner, top left corner, top right corner, bottom right corner, even the middle if we wanted to. We could pretty much have the zero point anywhere on here. But usually it would be a corner or the center point. Now, basically what we would want to do is just position the material and say, okay, the material that I want to cut, if I zero point in the bottom left corner and I want to be able to do this size, okay, I've got to be able to, to, to set up the machine and say, this is the registration point and this is where I want to start. And it's got to know that there is material to cut within that limitation. So if I use the smaller board with a file to cut this size and there's a smaller board, it would cut, but then it will pass the material and it wouldn't have anything to cut on this side and then back, okay? So obviously you want to have some, your material's got to always be slightly bigger than the actual item that you're cutting. I mean, it's, it, it's obvious, but it might not be that obvious. So your zero point would always be in the limitations of the material that you've placed. Now, we'll use a top right corner or a bottom right corner, anything. Uh, we, can, we can actually zero at any point as long as it's within the limitations of the machine. I hope that makes sense. The same rule applies for the z-axis and the, and the zero. Now, we've got, we've got this calibration tool that we use on our machine specifically. If you want to set the, 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 the Z point so that it actually just touches the material, okay? Now, we do it manually in some cases. On StockFit, we'll, we'll stick to the manual method simply because it's, it's the way that, it's the easiest way of doing it. And we usually do it with paper. We will slide a piece of paper in between the bit and we'll lower the bit and just have it kiss the piece of paper and spins around and you can remove the paper and that's usually a nice um, sort of starting point just to touch the top of the material. So what we would do in this specific case is we would go with a left bottom zero point on the top of the material and we'll set it up there. We always set up on the top of the material in our specific case. And um, basically the machine will register that point. When you press play, it will work from that specific point and it will cut out the panels that you need as you want it. Now, 99% of the time, if you're doing work on a full sheet, you can start at the bottom left corner, cut all your panels, make sure everything fits, and off you go, uh, you, happy go lucky. But in some cases, you do have an issue where some parts move, or, or a router bit might snap off, or something happens, and there's a part that, that goes missing, or moves, or just a dud part, or, or maybe there's something wrong on the G-code, and it machines in the wrong way, or whatever the case is. So, usually what will happen then is, you'll... You might be left with a weird off-cut section somewhere that you can either use on that existing board or you might have some off-cuts in your workshop that you can slap on the machine and, and redo those parts. Now, if you've got an off-cut on the machine and you want to cut from the, from the bottom right corner upwards, you might want to reset up that file and then set your zero point to that side if you want to be able to machine on that limit there, just to make sure that your panel, whatever that it is that you're machining, fits in there. So. We will do it on the software side. We will explain exactly how the whole thing comes together now. But basically what I want to show is the registration point. You setting the start point for the machine to understand where it needs to start. And obviously you've got to make sure that whatever you do fits within the limitations of your bed size. So that your machine doesn't have to reach that limit switch and then throw out a, a, a machining error and you don't know what happened. Okay guys, so let's just, for the purpose of this exercise, just open fusion 360 which is our software of choice now i'd just like to explain the zero point in the software environment quickly so the first thing is this you'll see what i've done here is i've created this sort of a yellowish orange block which is my machine limitations as mentioned earlier so this is a two by three meter block which means that this is where my machine can reach whatever i need to machine now i've done a 400 by 400 millimeter 16 mil thick um, board just to give you some sort of indication now to give you some sort of idea if i was to zero this top right corner in this specific situation i would have to take a tape measure or 
something and just make sure that I make absolutely absolutely certain that that this point that I've registered as a zero point is deep enough to cut this part of the material what I mean by that is if for some reason I took it slightly off and I zeroed this corner 380 by 380 millimeters in it means that my left hand side would overlap my limitation of the of the machine panel or my machinable space or limited area and it will throw out an error if it if it reaches this point here because the material is not within the machine's perimeters but if i took this and i put it anywhere on the machine i could machine it from every corner and it will be fine because i'm within my limitation okay i hope that makes sense so the first thing that we're going to do obviously is attempt to to set up a machine path for this single part on its own so we would never set up a 2.7 meter part or whatever the case may be so what will happen is for the purpose of this exercise we could basically just hide that first body we can say go into the manufacturing setup do a quick setup there um the setup that we've got here is a 2.7 by 1.8 which is a full sheet size and then we've got this body selected and i just want to take a quick look if we've got any offsets we've got a couple of four millimeter offsets but the top and bottom looks okay so that's that, that's a normal setup now on the setup you'll notice that we've got on the top corner here we've got our z x y and z icon which means that our zero point is on this top corner so if you do a setup here you could edit the setup by simply um, select selecting the stock point you could select that you could select the middle you could select this obviously because we're zeroing it on the top of the material as mentioned earlier we will select the top of the material that means the router bit can just kiss this corner you set it over there and then the machine knows exactly that your two points match now your your zero point will not i mean obviously if you if you do a four millimeter um, offset it's going to start machining on that four millimeter so we'll just leave that offset for now but the idea is to have it on the top here so we could change it on the machine size we could change this coordinates on the on the stock point to absolutely anywhere on this full sheet now if you chose to take your mode and take it relative to the size box that you've got and we just say zero over there you'll notice that suddenly your stock is the size of your sheet itself and we've got the left corner here now we could on the box model we could choose that corner and it'll also be fine but again basically with a setup with it being set up that way if we unhide this body what will happen is it'll still machine into a negative x and a positive y i hope that makes sense so with a zero point being that side we will machine into a negative x and a positive y if we change this box point to that then from our zero point we will be machining in a positive x and a positive y and we could just for the exercise we could actually go into the top left corner in which case we'll have a positive x coming down this way and a negative y going this way so basically all of those zero points are correct zero points and they can be utilized as needed the only thing is you have to zero it to the point that you have selected within the real world environment so if you selected your zero point at this stage here on the top left corner and you accidentally set up the machine you set the machine to zero point over here you will immediately get an error because this item will not be able to fit beyond that stage because the computer or the, the cnc machine will hit its limit switch immediately i hope that makes sense now just for the exercise we'll just go back and we we'll go in the bottom left corner and we know that that setup works and our zero point is perfectly set up in fusion 360 for us to start machining and setting up paths on this specific bit i hope that helped